meeting to order. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order and um, Director Miner, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you. Well, welcome everybody, those who are online and in person. Uh, we're gonna have a, a fairly short uh, meeting tonight. We have no public folks in the room, so we don't have to worry about turning down your cell phones. Um, I will let folks know that this meeting is uh, on Zoom and it's being recorded and sometime tomorrow, this meeting will be archived um, on our website. Uh, so we board members remember about that. turn your microphones on when you um, want to talk. And just a reminder, uh, we will be considering two action items tonight. The first action item will be to appoint a vice chair to serve through the end of the 2023-24 school year, which is June 30th. And just a reminder, this will require a motion and a second. And then the second action is to appoint a new um, board member. So I want to take just a second before we get into the meat and potatoes to review the process. Um, the board accepted uh, Reverend Johnson's resignation on May 8th. The process began to fill and the process began to fill the vacancy. On May 9th, the vacancy for school board position number three was announced and posted. Potential candidates were provided the opportunity to apply for consideration beginning May 9th through 4 p.m. on May 16th. Three candidates responded within the application window. We will meet uh, these candidates this evening as they will be asked if they have anything to add to their application or if there's any questions from the board. Board members will then select one candidate from the individual ballot. Each board, uh, then our board uh, executive assistant, uh, assistant will collect and tally the votes for us. If a majority of vote is achieved, and Janet will announce a successful candidate and I will request a confirmation vote of the board. So that will require a motion on a second. So any uh, review of the gender communications to the board? Uh, since the publication on the 17th, no changes to the agenda. Okay. And then let's move into the action items. Uh, this is time uh, we would like to appoint a vice chair to fill the vacancy through June 30th, 2024. I need a motion. I will motion to nominate. Am I going forward with whom I'm nominating? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will motion to nominate uh, Andrea Minor as vice chair until June 30th. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, we need a second. Second. That motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I'll call for the vote. All in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Good. And, um, so now we're going to move into the introduction of candidates for school board. And we're going to do this in order. Um, is Dr. Brandon Bishop with us? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, we're getting we're getting we're getting set up. Okay. okay. Are we ready? Yep. Hi, Dr. Bishop. Hello, how are you? Good. So at this time, um uh what we'd like for you to do is to introduce yourself, see if there's anything that you would like to add to um, the application questionnaire that you filled out, and then board members will have questions for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've lived here for eight years, uh, married, four kids. Um, I have two kids still in Roseburg Public Schools. I am a small business owner. I am passionate about the community. I was previously on the school board and 
um, I'd be the first to tell you that being on the school board, it's a learning curve. It's not something that you understand immediately. It was easily a year before I felt comfortable in those meetings. And there's a million acronyms. And uh, I asked a lot of questions to a lot of people. And you guys are in a, the, the school board now is in a situation where there's big decisions that need to be made. And I think it would benefit the school board to have somebody who has some knowledge of those situations going in. Uh, um, the, losing the bond was, was hard and, and our schools need funding and um, structural and, you know, regular maintenance and capital improvements and all that is very challenging without a school bond. And um, I think that those and many other issues are on the horizon. And, you know, I'm, 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 I want to work. I want to serve the community. And I think the school board is a great opportunity to do that. I'm going to open it up to board members to ask you some questions. Okay. Thank you for your application. Um, I am going to make this short and quick. So I have two questions. Actually, it, oh. it's, you know, in, in essence, it's one. But I know that you are, you know, very busy with the hospital medical executive committee, current vice chair of chief of staff you know, on the Board of Directors for Practice Management of Oregon. Um, and I know you have your own private practice as well. So my question to you is, knowing that you have a very busy schedule, will you have time to available to serve on committees as well? Um, we have eight committees and each, each board member, as you are very well of this, each board member serves on at least two committees, chairing one, and also will serve on as um, an alternate on others. So I just want to know if you would be available to, to do that work as well. And then also if you would uh, be, uh, be prepared for the board meetings by re reading the board packets before each board meeting. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I've done that before. Um, I've served on the community committees and I, I know that there is a, Janet sends out a lot of information before, and she's usually pretty good about getting that out way in, you know, sometimes a week in advance. And yeah, I can do that. I've done that before. I'm glad about doing that. So would you be available for committee work as well? Yes. Yes. I can rearrange schedules and, um, you know, certain things are hard to move, um, being on call and things like that. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I, I've done it before. I can do it again. I want to do it again. Thank you. Any questions? Hi, Hi Brennan. Um, let's see. I, if... You, you indicated that you had a tough time uh, when the bond didn't pass. And we haven't passed one here in 24 years. So it probably wasn't a big surprise that that one didn't. But um, if you were if you were on the board, what would you do or what would you suggest we can do to do a better job in maybe, uh, you know, maybe getting the word out? in passing this, the next bond, because again, we do need it and you know the importance of it, but what, what could you add or what ideas might you have that would help us uh, maybe achieve that goal? Well, um, in the past we've hired consult, our Roseburg Public Schools has hired consultants and um, that, that failed miserably. And, you know, different bond committees have given, you know, community bond committee members have given suggestions. I think it has to be a grassroots educational thing. I mean, the economy is 
is people are concerned about inflation. People are concerned about taxes. We live in Oregon. We have really high taxes here. Everybody hates that. But funding schools is essential on a fundamental level. If we want our community to grow and thrive, then education has to be something that we invest in. And I think grassroots education is the key to that. I think we have to do better as a community of understanding why a bond is essential. All right, thank you. Any I, other questions? I Go hate ahead. taxes as much as the next guy, but I think that um, there are things worth investing in. I have one quick question. Yeah. Uh, being on the board for three years, what did you enjoy the most about the job, about being in that position? Uh, the ability to interact and uh, hear about the positive things that students and staff and administrators are doing to better the community. Too often we don't hear about the good things, and I thought that was a great opportunity to hear about the good things. Okay, the other two board members, questions? Okay, yeah. Okay, I have one final question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask this of all three of you. Are, you know, this is just for, this is a one-year gig. Ends up, in, it's uh, filling the seat for position number three, Howard's. Are you interested in uh, running, um, when this terms up, are you interested in, uh, you know, you'll, you know, we have, we'll have three positions opened up in May. So are you interested in running again? Or are you just interested in this one year? I think I'm interested in running again. I yeah. really enjoyed my time on the board. I thought it was a good opportunity to serve the community. I have this civic desire to serve and I'm not really a flashy guy and I'm not, uh, I don't, I'm not a big accolade, words of affirmation guy, but I do want to serve in the background. I think the school board is a great opportunity to do that. Okay. Any final comments for us? No, sir. Okay. So uh, tonight, some some one of us will call you, probably Jared or me or one of us, and let you know one way or the other. So okay. You'll Thank know. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Brandon. Have Thanks. a great night. Thank you. Bye. So our next candidate is Rochelle Mills. Hi, Mills. Hello, how are you? Hi, everyone. I am great. How are you all doing this evening? Good. So um, uh, we're going to have, we'd like you to introduce yourself to us and see if there's anything you want to add um, to your application questionnaire. And then when that's done, board members have a couple questions for you. So I'll give you the, the floor and let you introduce yourself. Awesome, great. Well, my name is Rochelle Mills. Um, I've been in Roseburg for um, three-ish years, and um, I actually moved here from Northern Washington, where I uh, had finished my master's degree and was just kind of looking for a new community that I could be part of. So I got a job at UCAN um, here in town. I did that for just over a year and then um, decided that my heart was really in academia. So I um, applied for a position at UCC, which is what I got and am currently in uh, my role there as the director of curriculum assessment and scheduling, which is really all about um, what programs does the community need? What types of degrees does our industry partners interested in? What do students want? Um, and how can we really get those programs running and started and um, also how do we assess learning of our students so as far as learning outcomes program learning outcomes course learning outcomes i um, work with faculty to develop all of those and turn into our accreditation body um, and make sure that we are accredited and can get financial aid and actually bring students on um, and i'm also in charge of 
the schedule. So when classes run, um, I've done a lot of work recently to build a universal schedule, which is really kind of the idea of following like universal design to um, how can we create a schedule that works for everyone? And what does that look like? Um, it's a big, it's a big project, but Rachel really wants it to happen. And um, I'm really excited about it. So I've been collaborating a lot with the deans and the faculty um, to bring that to fruition in the next couple of years to really help Roseburg and um, all the different students that we bring to UCC so that they can get through their pathways from, you know, K-12 all the way up to graduating from college. Um, so that's what my job is at UCC. Um, I've never served on a school board before, so I've done a lot of committee work um, and those types of things, but as far as the school board or kind of the realm of um, running for offices, politics, that kind of stuff, I've, I haven't really touched into that really a whole lot, but um, I'm in a place where I'm solid in my career and I have kids in the school district here and I really want to um, be part of a community and um, kind of help a community holistically mm -hmm. support all of those who live within this community. And I thought the school board would be a great way to do that, um, especially since I have a huge love for academia. Um, I'm also currently doing a PhD program in um, industrial and organizational psychology. So I will have that done in the next couple of years as well. Um, I have two kids in Roseburg School District, one in about to be in high school and one about to be in junior high. Um, and I think that's really about it. That's a quick rundown of me. So now I'm gonna ask board members uh, who have questions of you to do that, Andrea. Yes, I do. Um, thank you for applying. And um, you had a lot of interesting things to see, uh, what COM family and community network board and all of the stuff that you do at UCC. Um, it's cool that you are a founding member of Make a Difference Day. And yeah. thank you for that. And um, with everything that you're doing and working on your PhD, I will ask the same question that I asked the previous candidate. Do you feel that you have the time available to serve on the committees? That's where the work is. We have eight committees at least going on, and each one serves on two committees. They meet um, sometimes once a month, sometimes not as often as that, but um, that's where the real work gets done is in the committees, and do you would you have time to do that? Yeah, that's a great question, and um, I love committee work. I know like a lot of people are tend to be like, oh, committees, oh, meetings, blah, blah, blah. I really love committee work. I think that um, I love to be collaborative and really uh, get all the ideas out on the table to kind of hear all those different perspectives because I really feel like that is what builds trust and it's what really makes it so actions can happen and we can make positive change is by, um, being collaborative, building trust with each other. And so much of that happens in committees. So I'm a big believer in them and I am fine with committing to doing the board meetings and the two committees, you say two committees, two committees um, and working those in my schedules. I, I'm pretty good at managing uh, like a work-life balance. My PhD is all online and it's one class a term. So it's really manageable with you know, working full time and having a family. Um, so I think it would be fine. I'm not concerned about my ability to do that. And also, would you commit to reading the board packet? Uh, sometimes it's pretty hefty before board meetings. <laughs> yes, I could do that. I'm sure that it's not going to be that much worse than my dissertation work. Any other board members questions? Uh, I have one. <clears throat> Um, you did you did touch in your uh, application um, a lot on the impact of committee work and how um, fruitful it's been for you. So I was just wondering if you had like an example of a, a time in committee where you made an impact. Yeah, well, I can talk about our Make a Difference State Planning Committee. Um, that all started, uh, let's see, when was that? 2022, I believe, is when it started. 
And it was one gentleman's um, idea of, hey, I want to do service projects and really get kind of volunteerism and get civic engagement and just the heart of that into our communities. And he <laughs> reached out to a bunch of different people and a bunch of different leaders um, and got a small group of us together. And it was a pretty small group. It was me, him, Brian Trinkle from um, United Way and the UCA AmeriCorps person, uh, program director at UCAN. And uh, we started it, just the four of us, and it turned into a huge thing. Like that first Make a Difference Day that we did, we had, and I'm gonna pull them off the top of my head, so don't quote me, but uh, we had, I think, 500 and something volunteers that we recruited to offer support to the community and 13 different projects across Roseburg and Douglas County that we supported. Um, and it just made, it really made a huge impact to those folks that we worked with. And um, we did it again last year. And um, also people are coming back saying, hey, you did this last year and it was really great and it was really helpful to us and we wanna do it again. So um, people just seem to really rally around that. And um, I feel like that is really an action showing that it meant a lot to the community. If people are like asking for more and coming to us and saying, hey, what about us? Oh, what about this idea? And um, our planning committee is like three times bigger this year. So it's still a little small, but um, it's growing every year and our number of projects are growing every year and our reach um, hopefully will grow as well so that we can get out into some other parts of Douglas County like Sutherland or Myrtle Creek or even Reedsport um, and get some some civic engagement and volunteerism there. I've also, um, I didn't put this in my application, but I served as an AmeriCorps member for four years earlier in my life. So I have a lot of experience with um, like volunteer support, capacity building, and all of those things that go into serving as an AmeriCorps member um, and giving back to a community. Okay. Michael. Okay. And um, since you work at UCC and you know um, our pathways program that we're really trying to develop that in our upper level, um, moving right into uh, a career path for for students, but our also our strong focus has been on literacy and math in our younger grades because if if we don't make those stronger um, i was just wondering if you had uh, any opportunities since you have younger you had at least one that's in the elementary age um, if you'd had a chance to um, work on like a parent teacher uh, or something that where you could have more involvement there in the elementary schools? Um, I have not worked on a, like a parent teacher, like a PTA. I haven't done that as far as in my parenting, at my parenting level, I suppose, or parenting hat maybe is the one that you want to call it. Um, but I actually did the first couple years that I served as an AmeriCorps member, I served as a literacy tutor. So in that wearing that hat, I did work for two years in um, marginalized elementary schools, um, working with their special education teachers and uh, to really build plans for students in those K-12 ages and those elementary ages and help with literacy and also building literacy in the family, like family involvement in literacy programs. I put on a few different programs for families. And uh, so I did that for a couple years. I've also done, I worked right after grad school in early intervention for a couple of years. So I was an early interventionist in birth to three programming, uh, which was all about partnership between the special education, the developmental preschools, the families, the doctors. I had a caseload of about 40 families and I was in charge of managing, well, helping support them with all their different resources you know, what can they get from the community? How can the community support them? How can they, um, you know, how can we give the students the best 
path moving forward to be successful. Um, so I did a lot of that in birth to three programming and helping them move into preschool. Um, I've also done my, I have three kids in total and my youngest and my oldest are both on the autism spectrum. So I've done a lot of advocating and uh, like IEP meetings for my own kids and really just helping them and fighting for them to make sure they get the resources that they need. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Once again, I, we all would like to thank you for applying. It's been, it's, thank you so much. I have one final question. And you know, this is a, a one-year appointment. It will end June 30th, 2024, it's, um, 25, I'm sorry. And so my question to you, are you, are you looking at this just for one year? Or are you interested in running? Uh, there'll be three uh, open or three positions for next May. So are you looking to perhaps throw your hat in the ring for a full term of four years? Or are you just going to play it one year at a time? Hmm. I think that if everything goes well, I mean, I've never, like I said, I've never served on a board like this before. So, um, but if I like it and you all like me and we all get along, I would love to throw my hat in to do something more long-term. Thank you so much. So uh, we have three to interview tonight. We have one more and our plan is uh, we'll, we'll make a decision tonight and our plan is to let the candidates know uh, one way or the other or if they were chosen or not. So thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Do you have anything to add? No, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you all for this opportunity and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. I'm sorry, <laughs> snack up on my on us. So this is going to be um, um, pretty simple. We're going to have you introduce. Uh, first of all, thank you for applying, and you know this is a one year appointment. Okay, uh, so we're going to have you introduce yourself. I'm not well. They probably all know you, but introduce yourself. Add anything that you would like to the questionnaire that you. Um, filled out and then we have some questions for you. So you're on. I know that. <laughs> uh, Keith Kubik, I uh, live in the, the uh, Fullerton 4 neighborhood. I have three adult children who have all graduated their entire career from Roseburg schools. And I think the education they got in Roseburg schools is one of the reasons why they're all quite successful. I retired from public service after 48 years with Douglas County, and um, I'm quite familiar with the county. I've been in all your, our, I feel like there are, I say our facilities. I'm aware of all the sites that the district uh, uh, has. And uh, I was actually, my office uh, prepared and conducted the high school sites evaluation analysis when the uh, uh, property at uh, near Umqua Community College was uh, purchased. Uh, we did that analysis for the, for the school district uh, as a courtesy from the county planning department. A uh, couple of things that I would say it, this is the things that I put in here, and I, you've had them or read them over. I just sincerely put them out there. This, this is what I believe in. And so I'd say 
I have two missions in life. My first mission is a personal commitment to positive results. I had that printed on my business cards. I sort of have it engraved in my on my forehead, and that's what I believe in. And the second one was to my my second mission was to be a role model for my family and in life to influence others. And that's about leadership. And uh, so the things that I've done in my career, the things I've done in my la life, I've had a lot of leadership experience. Um, I have uh, have a lot of public policy experience. And um, I think that the concept of believing in service and having a service spirit has been part of that throughout my my life as far as that goes. Uh, I was on the school board, as you know, I'm in 18 of those pictures up there and uh, maybe 19 of them. I'm not sure because I was on the board for 18 years and three months because when I first ran for election, there was a vacancy and I was appointed for the three months or year and three months, whatever it was uh, for my first election. And I was elected four times. And then I chose because of family focus and uh, the diverse things I was involved with, I just didn't uh, run again. Um, there's some little things. And then, uh, and then I ask, and the district's not sure, but I have been on the budget committee a long time, sort of ever since I left the board. And so um, it's a way for me to continue to leave a legacy with and for this district. And so I participate on the budget committee. And I think that it, plus being on the school board, is extremely important. It's extremely valuable. And, um, and the people that are here are here for the right reason. Uh, with that, uh, my, a couple of other things. I How much to tell you? I'm a native Oregonian. I was born in Portland. I went to 17 schools in Western Oregon because my dad was a logger. Um, I graduated from Portland State. I was in a graduate program at the U of O, but it didn't get my master's degree. I regret that, but I do have a family. So it was a choice between completing a master's and getting a family and getting a job. I went with the family and the job. <laughs> I've had a continuous education, a lot of it in um, in management and leadership, and then also professional planning throughout my life. Um, and uh, with regard to community activities that are on there, I've been involved in scouting for over 50 years. Um, I'm on the Eagle Scout Board of Review, um, and I officiate soccer. I officiated college soccer, and I officiate high school and youth soccer now. It's our turn. Please. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm asking everybody this. You're very aware of committees. So, yes, we have our board meetings twice a month. But on each committee member um, serves on at least two committees, chairs one, and then you're, there are also can serve on multiple committees as well. And um, the question is, um, will you be available to serve on those committees? And the second part is with the board packet, will you commit to reading the board packet in its entirety, you know, before be prepared for each board meeting, which you probably or I probably already know your answer. Well, of course, we could have a long discussion, but the first question was yes. And the second question is yes. I always do my homework for school business. I always did. Um, and I, I served on a variety of the advisory committees. Uh, we had uh, some very significant and controversial bargaining, which, you know, is always a tough one or two. Um, and we had finance and we had, of course, uh, buildings and facilities, which I usually was involved with just because of my area of expertise. But yes and yes. Oh, and I failed at retirement. I retired a few years ago. I just, I'm not busy enough. So I have a time commitment that I would absolutely give the school district. The other part of that is that um, I have been uh, doing uh, con special project consulting af in my retirement for the county commissioners. And I continue to do that, but it's just part time project work.
Oh, the 18 years and three months that you <laughs> were on the board. Um, if you could look back at that, what what was what highlights would you would you would you tell us about you know of those 18 years? What what stands out to be the the uh, the thing that you felt you you really contributed to and really had a big impact? I uh, spontaneously, and they're not in any order of priority. Um, number one of the most significant things was that I got to give every one of my three kids their diploma. And that was the, that was a peak because it wasn't just my kids. It was all the kids and seeing them graduate and seeing them succeed and seeing them finish our system was a huge thrill. I mean, it's corny. Number two is, um, the success of our 2000 and 2000 uh, bond issue. And we worked hard. And there's some things the school board did differently than what's happened in the lot newer few years. And I would be pre pre prepared to throw some of those in the pot and offer them and talk about them. But one's, one of the big things in that was we were out, the board was out to every civic group, every retirement community, every talking about the bond. It was really, there wasn't a commercial effort. There was a personal effort to talk about that bond. Um, the, let's see, the third one was during my term and while I was chairman of the bargaining committee, we, we had a chance to bargain a long-term contract with teachers. In my recollection, it was a six-year contract. Uh, do you remember, Rod? It, it was a it was the longest contract we'd ever bargained and that was a huge success labor peace and harmony and it came at a time where there was a, a lot of heads on differences and things that went on and those were a few um there was one mother that I thought I had if I think of it again I'll come back to it. <laughs> Uh, not really a question, more of a statement, but I think you should get a badge for failing at retirement. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, okay, you, you handed out the diploma to all your children. Now, are we talking grandchildren now? No, my oh. grandchildren don't live in town. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I'd love to do that, but. I was just going to ask you, um, you know, the climate of now is different too than than then probably. I'm just wondering if you think that there you would have to face challenges in a different way now um with with just the way the world is. Um and so just wondering what your kind of perspective on what you might how you might be di served differently now. Well, I think there's a couple of parts to that. And the first one is that there is a stability now with the new funding formula for schools coming from state monies. There, That is a change. That is a good change. Because when I first started on the board, we had to annually have an operating levy. We had to have an operating levy before we, we borrowed money to start school <laughs> and then, you know, it moved forward. So that was a huge change. So there is that change that actually has increased the stability than when I started. But also when I went through, um, I think what I would say to you is I have kept relatively contemporary because I was in local government and I did budgeting on local government until my retirement. And also that I have been on your budget committee. And so I followed the changes that have occurred in the law, the changes in the funding streams, the growth in the budget, and um, how much of it is allocated like to human resources and other things. There are more now, in my opinion, funding streams that are grants and special funds that don't end up in the general fund than when, when I was on the board in earlier years. Um, which made it a little, really makes it a little more complicated budget, in my opinion. But 
those are the some th things that I would observed. I'm just lucky that I have been able to continue with this budget committee because it has kept me uh, refreshed on school finance. I think too, with our recovering from COVID, you know, that has presented oh. uh, other challenges that, you know, it seems like we've had to spend a lot of our time and energy to try to, you know, figure out how that could best be dealt with to bring our kids up. Um, and so um, just thinking any, any help, you know, that you felt like you could add to that kind of collaboration. To the, the, the outreach or the focus there that, that I see is that we did, uh, children in the United States lost a couple of years of education. Did they fall behind some? They did. How much do I know? I, I, I don't know the numbers, This you know, the statistics on it. So what are we doing? And summer program enrichment programs, um, you know, all the all keeping kids on track for graduation, all those things are are important and have to have, continue to have a great focus. So what we lost in those couple of years, we restore and it, and the children that that graduate from af, from being there might be disadvantaged a little bit, but we don't want that to carry forward at all. I'd also say that my my daughter's a teacher in the rental school district. She's an elementary teacher, does a one two loop, and um, I she I she and I chat about school operations and other things, and so I have a different perspective from having a daughter that's an educator, and the loss, and there are reasonable things but what we can do is other outreach and especially through technology and that's something we ought to look at to get school and homes and and type bring people into to valuing schools by helping get them helping technologically to get more education to them from the system I have the final question. Yes, sir. Actually, I was a little disappointed when you're sharing your highlights that I didn't make your highlight for serving with me. <laughs> we served quite a few years. We together. did. And yeah. it was uh it was a very positive yeah, uh, thank you. relationship. Po thank you. Same way on my end. Yeah. So thank you. So, you know, this is a, a one year appointment ends June thirtieth, two thousand twenty five. Are you looking to, and there's no wrong or right answer, are you looking to just for this one year? Because in May of next year, there'll be three uh, open positions. So are you looking to go further than just one year or, or just this one year? I mean, have you thought about that? I have, and I was asking myself that same question, and I asked myself, how would I answer that? Yes. So how would you and, answer that? <laughs> and my answer is, my focus here was to step in and help and move through this short-term period. I am not prepared to say, but this fall, I think I would know. And if I felt that I was contributing, that it was valuable to the community and this board, um, you know, there was an, a collegial relationship um, I would certainly consider it, okay. um, but I'm not prepared to no, answer. I, no, I, I, no I, don't. I, I get it. Yeah. My focus right now was to come in and say, if if I can help you, I want to offer that. Okay, cool. So we're going to make a decision this evening, and uh, we will let you know. There's three of you that have made it through the process. We'll let you know one way or, or the other. Uh, hopefully this evening is the plan. Any other questions for us? Um, well, I hope that covers it. Um, I just care about the community. I care about our schools. And by the way, I'm coming to your meeting Wednesday night anyway. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go to that meeting anyway <laughs> because the planning, the, the report on the planning, that is really near and dear to what I, you know, uh, experienced with, and it's uh, the next step in what this district has done. And I guess I've been 
had my fingers in a whole bunch of those other steps. So I was going to follow that. Well, anyway. we appreciate that. So we'll see you Wednesday. So I will see you Wednesday okay. night. All right. Thank you, Keith. Very much. Yeah. That's not a threat. It's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We take about a five minute break. Hi, Andrew. Oh, oh, he's, he's texting. Uh, oh. <laughs> So in yeah. Oh, I know, but I'm gonna I'm 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 getting ready to that's okay. I need you to, to guide me. So in front of you you have your sheet and they're using they use really nice hard stock tonight. So mm -hmm. find your name across the top and then go down and put an X in um the uh uh, person that you would like to vote for, and then we ha we'll hand these down to. Does it have to be an X? I put my initials. That's fine. Okay. And then uh, we'll let the boss tally. Mr. Chairman, you do have a majority um, successful vote. I'm going to hand that to you. Okay. And then you can um, ask for an official confirmation. Okay, so I need to read this off, though. I mean, just the, just the, the total. Just the... So we have uh, the vote came in for five votes for Keith Kubik and one vote for Dr. Brandon Bishop. So um, we'll need a motion and a second to approve Keith Kubik uh, for position number three for one year, ending June 30th of 2025. And on Wednesday, uh, we will he will be sworn in. All of it? Or can I just no, motion? No, okay. I just... <laughs> All right, uh, I'll motion to approve Keith Kubik as uh, the successor of the vacant board seat. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second discussion. I'll call for the vote. All in favor for Keith Kubik to uh, fill position uh, number three, please vote. Aye. Okay. And we. Uh, Hey, uh, let's see. So our next board meeting, first of all, thank you for coming in tonight. Our next board meeting will be Wednesday at Green Elementary. Tour will start at 415. And we have a, um, we have a pretty packed meeting. Um, so 
might be midnight before we're done. I'm not sure. No, it won't be that long, but we there's quite a bit on it. Um, and it'll be an interesting, it'll be an interesting um, meeting. It should be a, a good meeting. So other than that, anybody have anything they'd like to say? Uh, Chair, I'll just say that um, it was unanimous vote with six. Okay. On that. So six, six to zero for uh, Keith B and move forward. So very excited about that. So happy about that. And thank the three, all three of them for uh, coming through. It was, um, and um, we hope that the two that did not get them, that they, we can bring them in the fold and use them. Uh, we're going to have different, several new committees this year. Well, we'll look at the facilities committees and that type of stuff. So we can for perhaps they would like to be on those committees. I think just more, it's, it's really important. So anyway, thank you very much. Meetings adjourned.